Hello, Klaus here, and um, welcome back to the channel for a, another DaVinci Resolve uh, test video about the new gyro data and how you can stabilize that if you have a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, 6K or 6K Pro. If you did not see the video about the, that update, take a look up in the top corner right up here. So let's just jump into uh, these tests I have done. All of the footage are shot with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro and I used some different lenses. Mainly it was Sam Yang 14, 35 and 85 millimeters but I also used a vintage 28 millimeter lens which I just like very much. Just a couple of quick things about the last video. Um, one thing you could do if you are shooting with your Blackmagic camera is actually to calibrate the sensor. This is done pretty easy inside of the menu. Uh, go into the setup and to the last page and just click the calibrate sensor, motion sensor, and click that. And it will look way better if you do this step first. So in last video, I showed you how you could stabilize your footage using the inspector inside of the edit tab. Uh, in this video, I'll actually just quickly show you how you can do the exact same thing. I'm just going to take this clip here. Uh, you can do that or how you do that in the color page. I'll just jump into the color page and in the color page, we're going to go into this icon right here, which is the stabilizing icon. And then we are simply just going to go up here and click right here, which is stabilizer. And with that selected, we'll go down to the menu and here we have the camera gyro and we can click that and just push stabilize right here and it's going to stabilize your footage. You do have the same options uh, as you have in the edit page. Um, you can't really do anything about the ratio or the smoothness, but you can play around with the strength. And for all the tests I did last time, all of those were at the default setting. Um, and you know, I'll just quickly show you a little brief test here. I did um, on my Sam Yang here. And uh, I'll show you the different um, strength I tried out. So let's have a look here. So first off, this is just a shot on Sam Yang in slow-mo with a shutter of 100 degrees. This is the default setting you have in the camera. And for this shot, I changed the settings to 0400, which is going to give it a little more handheld look. And if we do a comparison side by side, you can actually see what the difference is. So. I think it's pretty good with the default, in my opinion. Also, I had a lot of comments on Facebook about people having problems seeing the gyro and they have been shooting on the Blackmagic cameras, but the, the, the function to stabilize simply wasn't there. And I think actually I found the problem or the solution for that. I have a clip right here. This is shot on one lens and I have an exact same clip around here shot on a different lens. So if I take the first shot here, I'll go into the inspector and I'll go into the stabilization. If I go in here to change the mode, you'll see that the gyro data tab simply isn't here. And if I go to the next clip, which is shot same camera, but different lens, you'll see that the camera gyro is here. So what I think is going on around here, and I think this is actually fixable via a firmware update is actually um, on this first clip here, it was shot on a lens with electronics and um, the other one was shot on a manual lens. So I simply think there is something in the firmware which is making this issue. So I, I would have to try it out on a 4K camera with a, 12 to 35 millimeter lens or something to figure out if it's my lens or it's the EF version or what is going on. But for now, that is what's going on. I think it's something about, I think it's something with the lenses and it's not the camera or DaVinci Resolve that's making the problem for the users who had this issue. Okay, so let's just jump ahead to the test I'm going to do here. So the first test we have here is a um, run test. So here again with my Sam Yang 35 millimeters, 24 frames and a shutter of 180 degrees, just 
and of course here with the gyro data on and of course here I'll just do you a quick comparison so you can actually see what it's doing and this it is helping a bit it's really shaking without so here is the same shot more or less but in slow motion and this is just without the stabilization on here we have it with the stabilization I think that is smoothing out the shot pretty well but of course if we just jump here to the comparison of both you can actually see what's going on here and I think it's doing a pretty very well job at this actually so for the next test we're going to test out shutter angle or shutter speed because this has also some kind of effect on how well your footage is going to be stabilized using the new tracker so first off let's have a look here here we have a shot on a 28 millimeter shot on a 90 degrees shutter angle and here we have the same shot again this is of course with the gyro data and if we go this we will have both clips side by side and I do think it's doing a pretty good job at stabilizing my bad handheld here I'll try the same with 180 degrees shutter angle here it is with the data added in and um, it, it's, I think it's doing a pretty good job but of course if we take the side by side here we can see what's going on actually so if you take a look at the hill in the background you can see that it's actually doing a pretty good job and here at a 360 degree shutter angle exact same shot and let's see if we, this is going to affect the motion blur or stuff like that so let's have a look here here it is with the gyro data added on the stabilization And now we'll just go to side by side test. And we can see the difference again. If we take a look at the hill, we can see what's going on and how well it's actually stabilizing the shot. For the next shot, I'll do the same test, but in slow motion. Here it is with 90 degrees shutter angle. And of course, doing stuff in slow motion is going to smooth out footage quite well. Again, here it is with the gyro data on. I think this looks pretty nice and pretty smooth and here it goes side by side with the normal and with the gyro so you can again see what's going on it's doing a pretty darn good job in my opinion and of course here for the last one we'll do a 180 degree shutter angle and again think it's going to do a pretty good job it's a um, not the best handheld I have done so but here it is with the gyro data added on And of course, we are going to do the exact same thing with a side-by-side -side shot. So once again, if you look at the hill, you can see what's going on. And um, it's taking a lot of the wobbly effect out. Again, I think it's doing a really good job. And for the next clip, we will do a 360 degree shutter angle just to run through the different specs of the shutter angle and um, you know pretty normal shot again again I'm not so sure that the handheld movements are really good here but um, we're going to have a look right now side by side and I think it's doing a pretty decent job at keeping the levels at the right point here in the top of the corners of the one with the data added compared to the other one so for the last test we're going to test out different lenses because for instance a 14 millimeter are going to be way better than a 85 millimeter at least when you're doing handheld and you're trying to stabilize that out and make that look kind of smooth so let's just jump right into it starting out with the sam yang 24 
frames a second and in 180 degree shutter angle. So here we have the exact same shot with the gyro added on. I think that looks pretty good. And if we go here to the side by side shot, you can actually see it's doing a very well job at keeping the camera really, really steady. So for the next one, we'll do the exact same thing, but this is shot in 50 frames per second. So it's a bit more slow motion, I guess. And for the first shot, it is just how it would look without the gyro. And here we have it with the gyro. And again, it's doing a pretty good job at stabilizing the sides and everything around it. It looks pretty good. I've seen gimbal footage that look worse. And um, here again, side by side, so you can see what's going on in this shot. I think it's quite good, in my opinion. So for the next shot, we're going to go to a 35 millimeter lens, 24 frames a second and a 180 degree shutter angle. And it's a bit wobbly, as you can see, but here it is with the gyro added on. And again, I think it's pretty decent. And again, here we have a side by side comparison. And again, if you take a look at the sides, you can see what's actually going on. Pretty good, I think. For the next one, it is the same shot, but in a 50 frames a second shot. And again, I think this will do as well as the other shot. Um, pretty good, I think. And again, here we go to the comparison of the two clips with the data used and not, and I think it's doing a very great job. For the next shot, we're doing this on an 85 millimeter lens, and you shouldn't do that because this is going to be very hard to stabilize. But here it is with the gyro data added on. And of course, we would do a comparison of that again. It is better, but it's really hard to do shots like this on 85 millimeters handheld. And again, the same shot on 85 millimeters in 50 frames a second. And of course, it's a little bit easier shooting stuff in slow-mo to making it look a little more cinematic, I guess. So, and here, this exact same shot with the gyro data added on. And of course, we're going to come to the comparison of these things with and without. And for seconds, some of this could be usable. 85 millimeters isn't a very good lengths to do handheld work with. That's just the bare facts. Anyway, I do hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, give the video a like, share it with your friends if you think it would help them out. And if you want to be notified every time there's a new video on this channel, please hit that bell icon down in the corner. Until next time, keep filming, keep learning and keep sharing.